can't really believe we're about to travel again after a really long time. So, exciting. We made it on our plane. <laughs> Very fancy earbuds. This super cool chartreuse blanket and state-of-the-art pillow. Do you feel like a sardine yet? Yes. We are officially in Portugal, which I think is country number 31 for me. So, I'm ready taxi the wrong way now. There's like nobody here. Totally quiet. Out of the airport, so by anybody's standards, we're really in Portugal. <laughs> so far, I liked all the sculpture, but uh, this one seems to say, Stay away, or I'm gonna pinch you. Here's a slightly better view of Vasco da Gama Bridge. And it is so chill. The atmosphere here is so quiet and peaceful. To quote Matt, what a lovely naked person's eagle pond we've discovered. Here's an Irish pub in every port. It really is. Dublin. We got here um, just as the last bus was leaving the airport towards the city center and apparently they don't stop at Christchurch anymore which used to be always the stop that I would get off for this particular hostel. Um, so we ended up having to take a bus back because we went too far and took a bus back and they very kindly didn't make us pay the exact fare because we didn't have the exact change. Anyway, uh, we are here. We made it to our hostel. We're all checked in. We're ready to go and uh, Tired, but good. Um, we ended up having a really fun day kind of wandering around in the east part, the orient part of Lisbon, which is where the 1998 World's Fair happened. So it's kind of fun to see all of that stuff and uh, unexpectedly get to actually leave the airport in Portugal, which is pretty cool. Um, it's definitely nice to be in Dublin. There's always kind of a homecoming feel of coming into Dublin and just, yay, breathing Irish air. So, um, we're headed out to the countryside tomorrow in Ireland, so hopefully that will be a good trip altogether. Uh, travel vlogging is completely new to me. I've never tried it before, so hopefully this was somewhat fun to watch. Alright babe, how are you feeling about driving in Dublin for the first time? So excited. <laughs> Redwall meets Vikings? 
Yes. The St. Bridget is one of the like secondary patron saints of Ireland. So obviously everybody knows St. Patrick is like the big one, but St. Bridget also has a holiday. So February 1st is St. Bridget's day, which is also supposed to be the start of spring in Ireland, which is pretty cool to see that spring definitely has started here. There are bulb flowers that are up and bush flowers and tree flowers that are all budded or just opening. So definitely spring has started in Ireland uh, and we're well past St. Bridget's day. So St. Bridget is a pretty uh, cool lady. Sounds like a lot of interesting stories that are around her time. Um, but most specifically, she started a nunnery here, which I think was the first nunnery in Ireland. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was, um, which is pretty sweet. I mean, it's not giving me the same thrills as a flying buttress, but it is buttress adjacent. I feel that this Audi greatly fits the aesthetic this old church. My redhead in the wild. <laughs> so we start at 480. Christianity arrives in, in Ireland around 430, which is not long after the sack of Rome. So it's about linking things back to what was happening in the rest of Ireland and Europe. In the seventh century, Canberra is described as a metropolitan urban centre where pilgrims were welcome and plentiful. A lot of Gaelic chieftains sent their children to be to Kildare to be educated. Oh, okay. And Europeans. Gotcha. Um, and what was interesting about Irish Christianity is it was a very open form of Christianity. Okay. It absorbed most of pre Christian culture. So you see the movement from um, Bridget the Goddess mm -hmm. and Times of Gods and Goddesses. The Bridge of the Saint. Mm. So from Nimbolic, the Celtic festival in Bollock, which is the beginning of spring. Mm -hmm. Strangely enough, St. Bridges. Also the beginning of spring. Gotcha. Which is great. Yeah. Because finally we have a bank holiday. Next year we're starting for oh. St. Bridges. Oh that's it cool. Next year. Okay. We had a lot of issues with raids on the town. There are thirty eight recorded attacks between seven ten and eleven fifty five. Oh my goodness. 15 times at least by Vikings, Oof. which was unusual. Okay. Like I said before, yeah, there's no we're not connected to water. Gotcha. Vikings didn't like to be far from water. <laughs> um, and I think what people don't realize is Vikings weren't always traveling in hundreds. There might be 30 or 40 mm. one ship. Uh, right. So they were vulnerable. Okay. So they were quick raiders uh, and they would have come here and then basically if they stayed too long, they would have been kicked out by the kings. Of, who would have organized them. Gotcha. Then you see the arrival of the Normans. The Normans arrived in Ireland roughly the same time as they did in Sicily. So I can only imagine the reports back to head office. <laughs> <laughs> just picked an orange, it's lovely and sunny here. But I'm stuck in mud and it's raining. Does it stop? <laughs> How do I get assigned over there? <laughs> so it's a, a different experience. Gotcha. And with the Normans, you see a massive change in the way the church was as well. Mm -hmm. So you see a movement from the power base going from the abbots and abbesses to bishops and cardinals. Mm. That made it more male oriented. Okay. You can see a massive change in that orientation, um, which was a big mistake. <laughs> it really, uh, to me, it ruins kind of the validity of the church. Mm. The churches should be for all people. Mm -hmm. And I think it made them weaker as a result. literally so fun. We did this virtual reality and it was amazing. So we just came from the Kildare Visitor Center and they had this guy here who is a character and he was amazing. Um, clearly into reenacting and history and he sounds like he's very well traveled and 10 out of 10, 100% Irish humor, Irish spirit, like twinkling blue eyes, all the things. Anyway, so he took us, he was dressed as a Knight of Templar. Uh, he took us up to do a virtual reality, which was super fun. It was kind of a history, and I guess they'd written the scripts themselves. So a history of Kildare slash Kildara. And it was really, really fun. So you get to see kind of the pagan version and um, how it changed with St. Bridget and uh, Viking invasion, which honestly got my heart pounding a little bit. <laughs> um, 
And then also the Normans. Uh, there was a moment where you get to see Finn McCool with his fian. Uh, one of the first scenes was with Finn McCool and I was like, oh my gosh, I know you're not there, but also uh, I love Finn McCool. Um, so anyway, and going all through the history of the Sacred Flame and all of that kind of stuff. So that was insanely fun. Uh, was not expecting a virtual reality tour, uh, especially in this teeny weeny little <laughs> uh, visitor center, but it was very fun and it was definitely a very good uh, visit with the historian that was living there. Lots of good information for sure, some that we knew, some that we didn't know. Um, and as the Irish would say, it was very good crack. And how do you say that is, or do that is, you would press on the sphagnum, and if it oozes water, it's sphagnum. This is frog spawn. This is unbelievably beautiful view. This is possibly the reconstructed prehistoric hinge. Not 100% clear on that. I think Patrick and I have the same size foot. This is the hill of Allen, which is supposed to be where the fort of the legendary Finn Pool was located. How much you know? <laughs> Whew, so we had a very long day, lots of exciting adventures, um, and my dearly beloved managed to drive on the wrong side of the road all day with nothing weird happening, so yay! <laughs> Um, we ended up going over to a nature preserve and learning all about how peat works and how peat bogs uh, work and all of those kind of things and kind of seeing a little bit of a history of uh, the use of peat and what conservation efforts are now being done since it would be a bad idea for Ireland to destroy its bogland given how much of Ireland is in fact bogland. Um, which was really interesting and really fun and seeing teeny weeny newts and frog eggs and um, little plants that are all coming alive or something that we find super fascinating. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed seeing a little bit of that. We also got to go see um, the bog and hill of Alan, uh, Alan, however you want to say that, Alan, if you're 
a bunch of different pronunciations, um, which is the home of Finn McCool. So Finn McCool is one of my absolute favorite mythological heroes. So that was like a little mind-blowingly cool to be able to wander around where he theoretically would have lived um, and raised his family and all that kind of stuff. So it was a long day. There was lots of wandering around Dublin afterwards to try and find a sweater store because I was really wanting to get a fisherman style sweater while I was here this time. Um, I've avoided getting one in the past just because they're pretty expensive, but this time um, I decided to go ahead and spring for it and also husband decided that uh, it was a good birthday present. So uh, here I am in my cozy sweater, which is perfect for this weather. <laughs> um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed today's segment and we're gonna go out and find some food, maybe some dessert, and we'll see you tomorrow. We're in Glendalough and this is the tower, the round tower. I think I've reached maximum old lady vibes. <laughs> Mostly I'm just trying to keep my ears warm. <laughs> but between a thick sweater and a scarf over the head, it's getting me there. <laughs> got you covered whether you like trees or mountains or oceans best. This is an actual Celtic cross with Celtic engraving that you can't see anymore. This is 1214 Cathedral. At least it was built in 1214. And that cathedral interior, you can see this arch that I'm sure was amazing when it was whole. Although I will say the sky paint away is pretty realistic, don't you think? So these larger stones, the possibility that they are 10th century, which means Viking era. That is so cool. spots in Dublin. If I'm at the Christchurch Archway, I probably can figure out where I'm at. I really like that they got the weave on the pant pattern correct, so way to go Dublinia. Even as a time traveler, I have to be respectful and make sure not to spread any plague to the locals. They have plenty of their own. I guess my name is Izzy now. Workhouse sweepers, the call is. And by 1850, the Australians refused to maintain the girls in those barracks. Though any sign soon forgot what my dad's were. Just a slow wind. My family, one of thousands of Irish already there. I 
Aslan is a lion. They lie in the This is an Irish coffin ship called the Jeannie Johnson. All the way to Ireland for pub culture. And what song are they playing? Sweet Caroline. Shrinking. Look, I'm sorry I was disappointed, but I've been disappointing my mother ever since I was born, so I can't thank it. You've got a bit more time in here. When you're ready, join me through the fire. Tend to do, when faced with an indigenous population, we declare war, beat them up, stole their home, and banish them to our hills. Ten hours to get into. But the oldest recorded thing we have for the two of them is the gods of the earth. They were intimately associated with the land and the fertility of the land. They controlled the harvest and the weather. Whew. Well, we are finishing up our trip, so we had a lovely day. We went out of the city, went to Wicklow Mountains and Glendalough, and uh, got to see Loch Tay. Or Guinness Lake and then uh, went over to Glendalough which has a uh, monastery, it has an actual Celtic cross, um, it has uh, a rundowns of a cathedral, roundhouse, um, I keep saying roundhouse and I keep meaning round tower, um, and it also has absolutely gorgeous old woods and it's called Glendalough because it means uh, valley of two lakes. So there are two lakes, there's a waterfall, super gorgeous, super beautiful. It was really super fun to wander around. It was a little chilly, um, but we had a great time anyway. And then this afternoon we went to a bunch of museums. We went to the Epic Immigration Museum um, and Dublinia. Both of those are really nice because they are, one, a great explanation of the history of ancient Ireland, Dublinia covers, as well as the city of Dublin. Um, and then the epic immigration museum covering the more modern history of Ireland and diaspora and all of that cool stuff and uh, why some of us who live in the U.S. can claim Irish ancestry and how that all went down. Both of them are really well done and uh, super interactive, child-friendly, but also interesting to adults. Um, and the Dublinia has reenactors, whereas Epic had a uh, very cleverly done film and um, projection systems that are very interesting and engaging. So both of those were very fun. Uh, we also did a little trip to the Leprechaun Museum, which I've done before, but this was a little bit different because it was their 18 plus show, the After Hours uh, Dark show, which was pretty fun um, to hear that. It's kind of, uh, it's called a Leprechaun Museum, which is a little bit of a misnomer because it's really more an experience in traditional storytelling, which is of course the oral tradition. So stories are made up and told differently by each storyteller. Um, and can vary wildly <laughs> depending on who you have and what mood they're in and what stories they feel like telling. Um, so that's kind of a fun little reference to Irish culture and how stories used to always be told. I don't know if their storytellers quite reach Shanaki uh, status, which would be an ancient storyteller in Irish culture, um, but they're definitely nodding in that direction, which is very fun. Um, we also got to go to the Norsemen and have more traditional Irish food, which I will miss once we get back because honestly, I love pub food. Um, I think tomorrow we're getting up crazy early. We'll go have a full Irish breakfast if we can and then be on our way to Portugal and back to the US. So hopefully all of that goes really well. I'm sad to be leaving Ireland so soon because of course my heart half lives here, but it'll be good to go home and see everyone at home as well. So thanks for following along. I'll probably have a little update for you tomorrow, but this is close to the end of our adventure. So we're currently trying to find a place to have Irish breakfast. Um, but unsurprisingly, Dublin is dead at 6.45 in the morning. So I don't know if it's gonna happen. We'll see.
goodbye to Dublin and we're back to Portugal. What does that even mean? <laughs> This is the luggage we've been lugging around all day long. It's gotten a lot bigger than it was, yes, well, last time. How are you feeling about going back home? Yay! <laughs> Ready to get there, watch Yay. movies, go home. <laughs> That's our agenda for the rest of the day. Hopefully it goes as planned. We'll see. It's honestly not too bad as far as plane food goes, so way to be tap Portugal flights. Naturally, we made it back 15 minutes after the last shuttle to go back to our car finished running. So I guess we're going to take an Uber and hopefully we'll make it back to our car and make it back home at some point tonight. Well, not home home, but make it to our destination in Chicago at some point tonight.